I didn't really know any connection to Japanese Canadians other than family. So it got me thinking. This year, 2017, is the 75th anniversary of the internment, or as we call it, incarceration. So it was the uprooting, dispossession, and incarceration of 22,000 Japanese Canadians. Who were those Japanese Canadians that lived here? When did they come? What were they doing? We found some amazing stories that we've shared today with folks and also it was uh, pretty amazing to have people that showed up and shared their stories and we had our indigenous greeting and the taiko drumming group chibi taiko so that really inspired people but then what was really amazing is we had people in the audience and they were sharing their stories it is so important to tell stories, to learn our language, to empower ourselves, and to have accountability to the government and many other entities that have affected our peoples. I was asked by Lorene to uh, do some research into the Surrey archives and uh, the archives at uh, the Nikkei Centre in Burnaby to um, uncover some stories uh, about the early Japanese Canadian pioneers in Surrey. When I was going through the 1941 and 42 issues of the Surrey Leader newspaper in the archives, um, there was only one article on the front page, or one article at all, uh, about the Japanese Canadians in Surrey. And it was an article that was in, I believe, March 11th, 1942, and it was called uh, Japanese Farmers on the Spot, and it really just described how, you know, what are they going to do with a flock of 150,000 chickens to liquidate, and what's going to happen to the strawberry crop, and, but it never really, uh, there were no quotes or interviews with the, the Japanese people who had to leave or anything like that. Um, so that was quite shocking. When the society around you doesn't want the story out, it's even harder to tell that story. The Surrey City Centre Public Library, where this event is being held, actually is on land formerly owned at some point by Japanese Canadian pioneer settlers and probably land that was confiscated from them during the internment and just unraveling all that story. You walk around, you shop, you work, you drive, you take transit, and you have no idea the layers in a place. So as a poet, I'm very interested in the unspoken layers. I brought uh, the story of really my, my Japanese-Canadian history, my family. I think it's uh, a story that is an immigrant story. You know, it's a story that it could be a Japanese-Canadian, it could be a Syrian. Uh, you know, to me it still resonates today and it's important to share our stories so that people know the history of Canada. Japanese Canadian history is in the past and I could see the people who overcame or are still overcoming today and I learned a lot from their wisdom. Even as I wrote my book, I had a difficult time writing it. It was a book that did give me a lot of healing. It was important for me to tell that, especially to my family, and that's the reason why I wrote the book. And so when I was asked to do this, it was no problem. It was just realizing that, yes, this has been a dark blot on, in Canadian history, and it is a story that has to be remembered and a story that I hope doesn't happen again. Out of adversity, there can be a lot of healing, that we can embrace the past and we can just move on to the future. This is important because it's our history. It's a history of British Columbia, it's a history of Canada. And for too long, we've been invisible.